Hello everybody, my name is Alchemy and today you and I are going to have a little chat. This video is going to be dedicated towards comparing and contrasting the most important features between Vital and Faceplan, although I don't think that this should technically exist. So why am I doing it? Because a lot of people ask me about it and hopefully this will serve as some entertaining information to just geek out about sound design because that's what my channel is about anyways. So if you didn't already know, Vital is free. And before I say whatever it is that I have to say about either of the two, Vital is free. There's no reason not to go download it. If you are a brand new music producer and you're looking for the ultimate awesome synthesizer or whatever, uh, Vital is a great place to start. Long story short, if you're looking for the best synth on the market right now, I would gear towards Faceplant. Not because of the price of the premium, but just for the fact that it can do so many things. It's not perfect by any means, but we'll talk about that here in just a second. Before we get into that though, I would love you so much if you subscribe to the channel and also consider subscribing to my gaming channel, which I will leave in the description, to where I've got a one funny video, but I'm working on more to where I do funny voiceovers to different gaming clips. And then at the end, I will be doing some kind of remix thing that I'll be trying to update as a regular on top of the video stuff that I have here. Thank. So with that out of the way, let's talk about what Vital has to offer and why you might choose to use something like that. First of all, it is naturally a wavetable synth and it is great and can do some really amazing things. The key features that help it stand out are the spectral morphing that you have via these options here, which pretty much amalgamates your wavetable or waveform or however you want to describe that in cool and unique ways. And then it's also got some unique stuff that you can use as far as like FM and, and all that stuff too. Some other stuff that's really interesting with this is that the effects actually sound really good on their own if that wasn't enough. And then you also have something called mod remapping to where you can kind of set boundaries within modulation. And what that basically means is you can modulate a modulator, you can modulate modulation and kind of set like minimum and maximum values or in the sense of having another multi-stage envelope, you can kind of do something in the sense like this to where it's like, this is randomizing something, but the randomization is never gonna go past this point over time. That's pretty much what that is. Basically, just think modulating modulation, and that's probably the fastest and quickest way that I could explain that personally. There's other people that can explain that way better. The other thing that I think is pretty interesting is that the unison options on here are kind of unique. You have the table spread, which is kind of fun. You've got the spectral spread, which is also kind of neat, and the distortion spread. And it kind of just changes the, the timbre between the unison stacks that you have. So for example, if you were to take the table here, then it would have three voices, and instead of all of the voices being placed at the same table, it would kind of spread it out and kind of detune them or like kind of move them, pit them against each other so you have a more complex sound. That can be beneficial in a lot of ways. It can also lead to more messiness. Aside from that, both Faceplant and Vital have randomizers, but there are some randomization options here that you have. So Perlin, Sample and Hold, Sign, Interpolator, uh, the Lorenz Attractor, and I'm trying to think if there's anything else that I might be missing. I'm not really expecting to cover every single feature, so if I miss something, then please don't flame me. It's just I can't really think of it at the moment. But the key thing that I think people really enjoy about this is these guys here to where it's really easy to click and make multi-stage envelopes in that way. That's kind of neat. So with this, it's very easy to get up and going. And I think that if you are graduating from something like Serum, then this is a very natural progression, even though I feel like this is just as easy, which I'll talk about more here in a second. But as you can see, it's very simple in the means that you start with a basic waveform, you add some filtering to it, then you add some effects to it, and then you probably are like everybody else where you slap an OTT compressor at the end to make it nice and bright. Now, in saying that, one thing that I actually do have a major problem with is that there is no limiter on Vital. That drives me absolutely crazy. And if you're somebody that likes to do experimental sound design and stuff, that means that you have to go outside of the box. Now, to add to that same kind of shortcoming, one of the issues that I have with this is that you only have this amount of effects and you only have these choice filters between the two. Now, don't get me wrong. It's a lot. And you can do quite a bit with making complex sounds within the synthesizer in itself. But the other thing is that for me, like if you look at a patch that I would design, say in Faceplant, because of the racks and all that, and the way that you can use Snap Heap and Multipass, which I'll talk more about in the future here in a second, I would have to do all of this stuff outside. And 
you can do it by all means. And I've done sound design in that way with like Bitwig racks, with an Ableton racks and whatever. But sometimes like if I'm trying to make a single sound, I can't save that within the preset. I have to instead create, you know, something like a instrument rack or something like a group in that sense. And that's kind of inconvenient, especially if you're someone that sells presets like I do. Alchemy.com. Sorry, shameless plug. So <clears throat> within that, I want to make it very clear that Vital can definitely make quote unquote professional sounds. And there is arguably a lot that you can do to explore. And it's very deep in that sense. And you will get a lot of mileage out of it. However, in my opinion, I think that Faceplant pretty much like consumes Vital with the same kind of workflow approach, with the same kind of way that you go about doing sound design, and then says you can do it to the infinite degree. I know I just made that up and that's not really a proper thing to say, but what I mean by that is if you look here, you've got a source sound, but you can add tons more oscillators for one. The same applies to your modulators to where you only have a certain set amount. And then the effects are, are limitless. You can add as many effects as you want. Because there is the multi-pass and snap you ecosystem for one, the integration between the two is really unparalleled, especially when it comes to having an amazing amount of complexity for like uh, just crazy, crazy sound design. And so maybe you're designing something like a bass or whatever, and you really enjoy this rack. Well, you can not only save this rack and use this in other patches, but you can also use it on the outside and use it on something on vital. And the reason why this is important to me is because for one, as a matter of like presets and stuff, maybe you have multi-pass or snap heap, but you don't have phase plant. I know, right? That sounds crazy, but it exists. Well, the cool thing is that even if you don't have phase plant or you don't have all the snap ins, you can still use the macros and whatever these snap ins are attached to, even if you don't own the individual things. If I didn't make this clear already, or I didn't say it from before, uh, the full suite of face plan is pretty pricey at $500. You can use my discount code in the description for an extra 10% off or a dollar off on the subscription model, which is $10 a month to where they have their own rent to own style, which I would highly recommend if you're just trying to get your hands on the synth. That being said though, there's a lot more flexibility behind that. And really face plan and by nature is pretty much everything that's really cool about vital, but kind of does it on steroids. The other thing that's really amazing about this is the complex modulation system and how easy it is to get everything up and going. So for example, I've got modulators that are going on racks here, and then these macros are attached to modulators on the outside. So the routing capabilities that you have on this are pretty dense. Now I will say that there is no mod remapping yet. It's coming and it's, it, it kind of has its own unique workflow within that sense, but that's something that, you know, if you need, if you absolutely need mod remapping right now, just go to vital and then use like a multi-pass rack or whatever. But the fact that you can do all this, the fact that you can stack multi-pass, you can stack snap, stack snap heap. And then of course, like you can just do the effects on the outside individually, if you want to however many that your heart can handle, uh, sorry, so your CPU lol. Um, then it, it just, it opens up so many doors. I will also say that Faceplant has a better sampler and Vital does have one, but I think it's more designed for like noise and stuff. So there's a lot more individual things that you can do with like looping and changing stuff, although it's not really that big of a deal. Vital or sorry, Faceplant still needs additive synthesis for sure. Um, I am hoping that a granular synth is coming soon and then none of the two do quote unquote spectral synthesis, but that's not really a common type of, of sound design anyways, but even still, right? In terms of what's easier to learn or whatever, they're they're the same. I get this like really weird saying a lot where people are like, well, I think that for Vital, I can do sound design that I want exact and then for experimentation, I can do face plant. And I do think that's kind of uh, closed minded because they both have almost the exact same workflow, right? So let's say that you start with a source sound and in some cases you could actually design this to be the exact same layout. So if I were to start a new patch and I go into Let's just do, I've got three oscillators. Then I have my delay. I've got my flanger. I've got an EQ. I've got a filter. And I know that this is a different kind of filter, whatever. I've got distortion types. I've got a compressor. I'm going to use dynamics. 
And then I've got reverb. Wherever that is. Never mind all of the other effects that this has, right? Which all come into these individual things. So of course, Faceplant has way more effect processing things and whatnot, which I'm gonna try not to compare the two between because that's a given. But in essence, I pretty much just created a very quick and dirty version of Vital in its own right to where if I wanted to, I can say, okay, well, this is my, you know, this is my Vital thing. And then I can upload or put all of these in within a multi-pass rack and say, all right, well, all the effects that I have are now there, and then I can duplicate it. It's really insane how you can do stuff like that. Um, one thing that I do, one quirk that I do want to mention is the LFO on here, and it is a little bit different than how you would do that here to where you can just double click and it's not quite as intuitive, but as long as you understand that you can kind of just click on the line in this way, it shouldn't really make that big of a difference. Uh, other than that, they're almost exactly the same. Um, but within that, I think that this is just as easy to learn and then it goes further. So if you understand vital, then you will understand phase plant. If you understand phase plant, then you will understand just about every other synthesizer that's quote unquote subtractive synthesis or is focused on applying effects. The last thing that I really want to talk about that is probably the most important feature for me within phase plant is that the slice EQ changed the game for me. The fact that you can use this to create custom filters and the fact that you can modulate them both on an entire level and on an individual basis this way, so you can apply LFOs or randomizations or whatever, means that this will always be my go-to choice for making bass. Because shaping vowels is the way that you create neural bass in the first place, at least in my opinion. It's not the only way, but it's, it's the alchemy way, let's just say that, or the way that I prefer to do things. And the ability to stack these, so distortion, slice EQ, distortion, slice EQ, and then you start pitting these against each other, you get some insane interactions between the two that create some really complex sounds. Add that, you also have a limiter on here, and everything that you need to make pretty much the most crazy sound design aspect that you can possibly think of is all available to you within this. The other thing that you can't really argue with is the verticality workflow to where you can kind of just move these in a block type pattern and this is incredibly seamless when it comes to doing things super fast. The only difference between the two when it comes to starting from nothing is that, well, there's two differences. On one end, if you start a brand new patch, you have nothing, so you have to pull up in a, a synthesizer, but you can just save that as a default preset. The other thing is that unlike uh, Vital, Faceplant has everything that you need all in one tab. Whereas with this, it's got four tabs. Yes, if you pull up multi-pass or whatever, you can pull up another tab, but you can do all the same processing within this as you can in multi-pass and snap heap via these lanes. So it kind of it doesn't necessarily make it obsolete, but if that's something that you have trouble with as far as a speed aspect, you can do all your processing right here and it's all within view. Your modulators are here, your generators are here, and the modulation system is all kind of mapped out as well because you can always detect where something is via the shining things. So if I go here, you can see that it will highlight this and be like, oh, that's the parameter that I'm working with. So it's very easy to figure out where you are as opposed to scrolling down a modulation list. To which if you're used to it, it's not that bad, but at the same time, to me, this is a more seamless workflow, just maybe because I'm used to it or whatever. You feel free to you know, give me your opinion or whatever, but that's just personally why I gear towards something like that, specifically aside from the sheer power that Faceplant has to offer. So. By all means, I'm not saying that you should get one or the other because in my personal opinion, I think that there's no reason not to have at least vital, right? Like go get it, it's free. You can't argue with free. At the same time, if you are looking for something or are super serious about sound design, in my opinion, phase plan is the best synth on the market that you can get your hands on. Does that mean that you won't be able to make cool sounds out of vital? No, of course not, but I have never seen anybody make any kind of patches like these that I've been making lately with these insane racks. So you have macros here that control the, the dry wet mix of these different racks and essentially have a super preset. And because of that, you can mix and match between the two and essentially like the more sound design that you do in Faceplant, especially if you utilize the multi-pass and snap heap racks, the more that it gives back because you can reuse those blockchains that you're building and stack them and keep on seeing how they build interactions with each other. 
And I hope that you see like how much of sheer depth something like that has because especially like from modulation and randomization and stuff of stacking effects, like you guys have a whole world to explore if you've never done this before and I invite you to, and I've got tons of videos on how to teach you how to do that stuff. So please, by all means, like get in and start exploring with sound design with and face mine because you're gonna learn a lot very quickly. The other thing that is maybe not even necessarily worth mentioning, but just as a, as a matter to try to be a little bit more thorough is the fact that the wavetable approach to these are a little bit different. And I will say that I prefer phase plant, but I don't necessarily think that it's easier. Um, one thing that someone had to tell me was to figure out how to draw a wavetable without the block things. And you have to set this to zero in order to be able to do so to like, let's say draw your own waveform or whatever. Whereas with this, you just click on this tab and then you just go bloop and it's super easy. The most confusing thing about this in particular is the difference between doing something like this, where you can see that this is highlighted and clicking on a keyframe to where you can change that. And now if you click on this and make a keyframe, it's going to morph between the two. Whereas with this, you can see it's very clear that you just double click on this and then change the waveform. And then now this will actually move in between each other. One thing that's kind of quirky about this is that if you do this on vital, then whenever you're playing a sound, this will morph it for you. Whereas if you're scrolling through the morphing table like this, it doesn't, and I don't like that. Um, however, this does have some really cool filter processing stuff, and it also has built-in effects that you can use uh, that I think are a little bit more than vitals that uh, are really cool. Different types of distortion, uh, phase rotation, self FM, self uh, sine FM, square phi, all that stuff. And I know that vital has its own, but this is really fun and I get very, very different results by using both. At the end of the day though, like you can use, you can make wavetables in Vital and then put them into Faceplant or vice versa. So it shouldn't really matter too much. It's just saying, okay, well, if wavetables are your thing, like I know some YouTubers and people in the community are, that might be why you make a different decision between the two. So yeah, in essence, I really wanted to try to be as unbiased as I could, but I really wanted to make a point about what is objective between the two and then say, okay, well, here are some of your preferences that you might want to consider if you already own both. It's really dumb to say that one is better than the other. That's, I don't, I don't really, I don't resonate with that at all, especially because how do you argue with free? You know, uh, thank you, Matt, everybody, please be sure to thank Matt title, but like you can't argue with free. And not only that, but Serum from 2014 up until very recently was like the meta synth at the time and changed the whole world of sound design and production. And then somebody said, oh, well, I'm gonna take the best parts of that, do some improvements to it and then make it free. And now it's available to everybody. It's like, you know what I'm saying? So yeah, the other thing to consider too is that again, you know, if you are looking for something a little bit different or like you're very comfortable with Serum, then I would say that vital is going to seem almost like shockingly similar, but all the same things that you apply from the serum type workflow are still going to be applied within phase plant just to a more in-depth degree. So yeah, let me know your thoughts guys. Uh, I'm just, I'm not really curious as to which one you think is better because I think again, that's kind of silly, but at the same time, I am curious as to what you typically reach for more or maybe what you wish for and other synthesizers, or maybe something that you found that kind of has a happy medium between the two, even though they are a lot more similar than you think anyways. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you can do me a favor, go check out that gaming channel that I have. It's really cool. I only have one video up right now, but it is not up. YouTube.com. My channel. There will be a link in the description. Go watch the video. Super fun. Super funny. I've got a lot of cool stuff coming up and I think that you guys will enjoy it. And it's got me doing voiceovers and stuff. And, um, I will be doing like remixes of the game of game stuff at the end. So it will still be music focused. So yeah, thanks guys. I will see you all in the next one.